Okay, so welcome back. This video is obviously about how to write comments, how to print, and how to declare variables. Now, those words may be super unfamiliar to you. That's okay. I'm going to teach you how to do all that in this episode. So the first thing you need to learn how to do is how to create a script. Okay. Now, if you go to advanced objects, which you can open by going to model and advanced objects, you can just click on this and it'll open and close like that. Um, just search script. And this is basically where you write all your code. Okay. Also this, but um, don't use this for now. Okay. Uh, just drag it around. I mean, drag it inside the game. And there you go. You have your first script. Double click it and you will be uh, introduced to your first script. Um, it'll say print hello world. Okay. Now, what does it mean to print? Printing is basically, um, you know, the output tab that you should have opened in the last episode. It basically um, writes things in the output. So if we run our game, it's going to print hello world. Okay. Now, say you wanted to do something else it's like uh, printing your username so the keyword that you need to memorize is print okay open bracket quotation mark and just type out your username okay and you click run and it will print your username there you go now you may be uh, wondering why do I need to use these quotation marks? Quotation marks are used to encapsulate or keep within themselves strings. Strings are like words or any letter in the alphabet. Okay. So if we wanted to write like a bunch of random words and click run, this will work because we put them in quotation marks. But if we removed the quotation marks, this will not work. If you hover over the underlined uh, word, it'll say that there is an unknown global variable and whatever this is. Okay. This is var where variables are introduced. Variables are like these. Uh, I'm not sure if you have done algebra yet. Uh, if you have not, then Imagine you declare x is equal to 5, for example, okay? Now, whenever you reference or mention x, you are referring to 5, okay? So, if I say print x, I am printing the variable x, which is 5, okay? And as you can see, it printed out 5. But, if I introduce quotation marks, it's going to print X, like literally X, because you put it in quotation marks. And as I said before, um, it'll basically print out the string, not the variable. Okay, so if you wanted to print the variable, you just remove the quotation marks. And there you go. Now, variables can be a multitude of different things. It can be a number. Variables could be strings and variables could be booleans okay booleans are basically true or false so if we wanted to print uh y it's gonna print it's gonna print strings okay if we wanted to print z it's gonna print true okay now z can only be true or false okay True or false? Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, say you wanted to print uh, x plus 2, for example. Okay, pretty easy to do. Just print plus 5, for example. And there you go. x plus 5 is 10 because x is 5. And if you add 5 by 5, it's going to give you 10. Okay, now say you're programming a calculator, okay? You don't want it to just display five. I mean, the answer, right? You just want to display like 
uh, 5 plus 5 is equal to 10, so it's more understandable. Okay, so to do this, we need to print x, which is 5. Okay, then you do two dots, two full stops, two periods, whatever you want to call them, like this. This is basically a continuation of whatever you are already printing, okay? And let's say plus. Oh my god, okay. Click plus, I mean type plus, okay? This will print 5 plus, okay? Because you're using a string, so it's literally going to print whatever you put inside the quotation marks. So this will print 5 plus, okay? Now, if you wanted to continue this, we also just do the same thing, two periods, and uh, we could possibly just, you know, uh, I guess we, let's add 5, okay? This is going to print x plus 5. x in this case is 5, okay? 5 plus 5. Now, we obviously want to know the answer, okay? So we continue it. Two periods, as you can see there. Open the quotation marks equals and close the quotation marks okay oh we there's a little problem here okay whenever you are using a number it's going to give you this error okay if you're uh, using print with multiple strings okay so what you could do is put it as a part of the string so just delete the continuation and the five and put 5 here since it's not a variable okay so x plus 5 is equal to now this is where it might get a bit tricky okay you could either just open bracket actually let's not open brackets okay just uh, do x plus 5 and this will give you the answer which is 10 okay or you could declare another variable with the answer so Let's say answer is our variable. Now, it's going to underline it because there is no variable called answer. So let's create the variable answer. So answer is equal to x, which is 5. Now, if you left it at this, okay, this is how it works. Answer is equal to x, which is equal to 5. So this will say 5 plus 5 is equal to answer which is 5 which doesn't make sense obviously because 5 plus 5 is 10 so if we wanted the real answer answer would be x plus 5 and there you go 5 plus 5 is equal to 10 okay now you may have noticed a an inefficiency in the script why am i doing a quotation I mean a string here continuing it with another string you don't have to do this okay you can just put everything within a single string and this is how you make your code more readable and efficient basically there is no need to have extra uh, stuff lying around okay this will give you the same thing so no worries um, yeah, that's basically how you use variables along with printing the variables. Okay, now let's say uh, we wanted to print uh, your username and uh, how many goals you scored or something, you know? So you just print out covert code has scored continuation and you could either just write the number here okay three but if you want to be able to change that easily you just declare a variable this is why they are so handy okay this is why you use them um, let's say score is equal to I let's say I scored 20 points I guess I scored 20 points or goals or whatever you know 
has scored score okay now we obviously need to close the bracket if you don't close the bracket it's gonna give you an error okay look at that you do not want those if you got an error like this it's because you did not close the bracket the brackets need to close okay because this the um, the compiler or I don't think you know what compiler is but let's just say Roblox Studio whenever you click run starts from the top reads score is equal to 20 no problem there goes down and there's a print statement okay this guy descriptor wants to print this but if you remove the bracket the computer the the studio program will not know where the print ends therefore giving you this error okay and you want to avoid errors at all costs okay so just close the bracket do yourself a favor okay now let's continue this dot dot okay open quotation mark close the quotation mark okay now you could either label this as um, points I guess you could or goals whatever you want to call it I guess has scored 20 points and this will print out covert code has scored 20 points why because score is equal to 20 okay and there you go this is what it would give you okay now let's introduce comments okay comments are basically uh, a way to annotate your code or like describe your code and only you could read the comments okay so this is just basically to help you understand your own code so you can declare a comment by doing a double hyphen okay hyphen hyphen there you go it changed the color of the words okay now anything after this hyphen will be ignored by the script okay see that there is not gonna be like no error after the script runs okay but if we remove the hyphens red underline that's really bad okay that's really bad run it bam your script will not run okay so to fix this you just add back your double hyphens now this is a one line comment okay there are two types there are one line comments and there are multi line comments okay so if we want to type out an essay for some reason you know um I'm just typing my essay bam I need to uh, go to a new line I press enter and I just continue typing yeah no that's not how it works because this is a one line comment and it will not cover for the second line okay now you could obviously just add two hyphens to continue this sure but that is inefficient okay I mean it does it doesn't make much difference it's just you know uh, common procedure I guess for programmers to use multi-line comments for multiple lines okay so to do this instead of using one line comment structures the, the uh, two hyphens you just type out two hyphens and two open square brackets okay now as you can see it commented everything underneath these uh, hyphens and brackets okay to stop it from commenting out your entire script go to where you want the comment to end um, and just do the same thing two hyphens and two closing brackets square brackets okay and there you go this is your multi-line comment you could just type out as much stuff as you want and script will not uh, stop working okay now you might be wondering okay so I understand that but where are these used why are they used okay so imagine this is a much longer script I mean you don't really need comments for this script because it's like really short and easy to understand but let's just annotate it anyways okay um, this here is the score okay so this comment is describing the variable the score which 
uh, covert code has scored. Okay. This describes what this line is doing. Now let's annotate the next line. This print statement um, prints out covert code points scored. Okay. Now this makes your uh, script much, much, much easier to understand. Okay. This is why it's used. Now, personally, I don't use multi-line comments much. I only use these, but at the start of every single script I make, I make sure that I declare a multi-line comment. Okay. And I type out who the author is. Oh my God. Okay. Who the author is and the script's use. So uh, this script is used for teaching people on YouTube. Okay. Now what this does is imagine you have a lot of scripts. Okay. You, you we only have one right now, but whenever you start making more scripts, more advanced scripts, this is going to come in handy. Okay. So double click on the script to open it. Bam, you know who made this and you know why it's used. If you're searching for something, this can come in really handy and you'll know if you're in the right script or not. And if you are, you search around and look at the variables. Okay. And you understand what this is doing. Now, don't go overboard with this. You don't have to like comment out every single, um, um, line that's just not practical I guess you could it's just gonna take a lot of time on your end and um, assuming you understand the line then there's no real need to comment every single line okay you just put it at the start of every major segment I guess okay so that's the end of this video and next video we're gonna cover uh, conditional statements uh, so stay tuned Thanks for watching.